In this video, we're gonna refinish the spindles for the car. And we're gonna do it without any special tools, just your ordinary tools that you'll have in your garage. No fancy powder coating, nothing like that. And we're gonna go through it step by step. And the best part about all this is, these are disc brake spindles. That's right, so long drum brakes. So I wanted to switch out the drums, you know, for the past few months. And I started looking on the forums, on Facebook, started putting ads out for Wanted. And uh, man, I had no luck finding the stock ones. And I know they reproduce them for the later model years. Like I think it's in 73, they make reproductions. But everyone who carries those, they're out of stock right now, right? There's shortage and delays for all products. So there just wasn't anything available. So I reached out to Stevens Performance. I'd never dealt with them before, but they're a large uh, junkyard. I'll put a link to their website. And I asked if they had a pair. And he said, well, I think I do. He's like, they've already been gone through a lot of those already over the years. But he thought he had a set. He had to, he had to go look for them. So he went up the back and ended up finding a pair. And uh, yeah, he's like, yeah, we got a set. You know, they're like 250 something. I'm like, oh, all right. A little more than what I was wanting to spend for spindles, but... You know, I, at that time, I thought it was my only option. So I said, sure, let's do it. He shipped them to me and uh, they're pretty rough. They're pretty dirty, but um, <laughs> this is where it gets a little funny. So I checked my bill when I got the spindles. It was like over $500, man. And what the price he told me, that was a piece. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I don't know, maybe I wasn't that familiar what these things really go for, or maybe that was his sale price that they have set for him, but man, I couldn't believe I had to spend 500 some dollars for these front spindles. And I called him up and talked to him. I said, you know, I had no idea that you were talking about a piece, you know, like, who would say that? You know, I just thought for sure, like, it's for the set, but nope. But what are you gonna do, you know, I mean, I don't know. He really wasn't willing to do much on it. So it is what it is and this is what we have. So we're going to get these things cleaned up. Now the first thing we're going to do with these is we're going to use just a scraper, like a putty knife, a scraper knife. We're going to knock all the big dirt and grime off these. And then from there, we're going to hit these with these little two inch abrasive discs. Nothing special here. I actually got these off Amazon. I order a lot of stuff off Amazon and uh, they come in. This kit was like 20 bucks, and it has a bunch of discs in there. They have, you know, a coarse, a medium, and more of a fine. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna give these a shot. Right, so this is how they look after spending a bit of time with the coarse pad, uh, which in this kit is actually the brown. I'll, uh, I'll put a link in the video to uh, where I got this from off Amazon. Now I haven't touched the actual shaft of the spindle yet. I'm going to use the finest um, pad, which is the blue one on that, because I did want to use. I really don't want to remove any material. I just really just want to polish it up. So we're going to go hit the the spindle shaft on both of these and uh, go from there. These are coming out real nice. I like the way they're looking. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be great. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the wire wheel, which I, I hate, because these little things come out and they stick in you, your clothes, and get on the ground. But I just wanna use that to clean up uh, the threads on both of these. So we're gonna hit those real quick and uh, wrapping these up. This isn't the fun work, you know. I'll probably have an hour and a cleaning these things up but you know what you can you can do it and save yourself a bunch of money if you don't take it somewhere to get them coated or treated and you know at the end it's going to be so much better when we're all done it's going to look great 
and uh, I just could never put them on the car the way they were. So. So thankfully I was able to finish that work without getting any of those wire bristles stuck in me and let's check out these parts. Yeah, these things turned out real nice. I'm happy. So check out the threads. I don't know if you can see them, but that came out great. Why do we do that? Because check that out. We can just spin those right on now by hand. Great. And don't forget, you saw me at the end of that time lapse. Don't forget to clean up your hardware makes a big difference right so I just wire wheeled these um, one of the washers was a little rusted so I had to hit that hit it with that uh, strip it pad and that worked out great you know and these pads from Amazon they worked really good I only went through like four total of these I did use two of the coarse and two of the fine and uh, well maybe I think one of the medium as well to do some finished cleanup work so I used like five of these pads and I mean gosh for Basically, the known name brand they are, I'm real happy with the durability of those. They worked great. Just dirty work, you know, and it's, yeah, kind of a mess, but it worked out really good. So now we're going to move on to the next step, and I think you're going to like this one. This is going to be cool. So these spindles are looking great, and maybe you think uh, we're ready to paint or just throw them on the car, but you're wrong. We can't put them on the car like that. Now there's going to be one more step we need to do because all of this uh, surface is really rough, and that is all rust down in there. We did the best we could with the abrasive materials, but man, it's going to rust right back whether you prime it or whatever you do. But what we are going to do is use some Fast Etch by Eastwood. So this is actually a rust converter and it is acid based, right? So it's actually just phosphoric acid and water. I don't know if you can see that, but that's all it is. But what it does is it gets into the metal and soaks into it and it just neutralizes the rust. And the process of this is you spray it on for about 30 minutes. You let it stay wet. And after 30 minutes, you wipe all the excess off with like a metal prep. And I've used this product before and it works great. So all, what we're going to do is we're going to basically put it everywhere except for the spindle. We're going to tape all this up and spray it on. And like I said, let it sit for 30 minutes, wipe it off, and then we'll be ready for some primer. Okay, so I just taped up the spindle portion, the shaft, and use some gloves. When I've, uh, you can apply this either with a rag, a brush, even a scotch Bright pad works really well to get in there. But, um... We're just going to use a rag, so open it up, and um, start spraying it on the metal, right? And again, we're going to kind of let it just kind of saturate the metal, just spray it on liberally, and get the rag, and just work it all in with the rag. So. This can actually turn that brown rust, and it'll start turning it to a black and coating and, and again you just want to try to keep it wet you don't want it to dry which is kind of hard to do but just keep spraying it on all right so that one we'll come back to that one in a minute Spray some on the rag. So this is going to be this is going to help keep any rust from coming back onto the part. Because if you were to paint this, man, it would just as soon as it got any moisture, it would start rusting again. So. This is going to help it last a lot longer, and if you don't have access to a, any type of blaster, you know, this is going to work great. Right, we'll come back to 
to this one and just keep wiping it on making sure like I said it doesn't get dry and I'm also gonna use this this one washer was really bad so we're gonna spray that on there the other washer and nuts still have a pretty good coating on it so we're gonna leave those be keep applying this stuff for a few I'll spray some on. Now, I've even seen where people have made this on their own because again it's just phosphoric acid and water but if you're not feeling all like having a science project you can just buy it from Eastwood and it takes all the guesswork out of it but it's pretty simple. We're just going to keep this process going over and over and uh, I'm going to stop recording now and we'll come back and when it's all done and when we clean it up. All right so this stuff has been sitting now for 30 minutes. Tried to keep it wet and now we're going to go and wipe this off with the uh, wax and grease remover. Get this stuff all cleaned up. Now before I put the spindles on the car, these things were pretty rough, been sitting outside in the weather, and you definitely want to run a tap through these caliper bolt holes. So you got two big uh, holes for these, they're half inch 20, and a uh, good thing I'm cleaning up because they are a mess. So again, you just want to take your time, make a few cuts, you can feel it start to bind up and then back it off, relieve it get those chips out and every once in a while we want to bring that tap out and get all the chips and rust and crud off so nice thing you want to do. these are big taps I mean you have to really put a lot of force on it to break them but still you don't want to make it any harder for yourself than what you need to so and so I brought these inside it's a little cold out in the workshop and I want to get these painted so I also want these to uh, warm up a little bit so I'm gonna knock those chips off into the garbage can here give them a little spray and keep this process going until it goes all the way in nice and easy so Again, this is half 20 thread. These are fine thread bolts. And just about all the way through there. So once I run a tap through all of these holes, I'll go over them again with a wax and grease remover, let them dry up, and then we'll hit them with a the primer. And I'll, I'll run outside with them, hang them on a hook, and hold them and just paint them while I'm holding them with a little spray can and then bring them back inside to hang and dry so just trying to you don't want to try to paint these things while the their ambient right now is like you know high 30s it's pretty chilly out so that's no bueno for painting so one more detail step I need to do is I want to clean out um, the interface where the ball joints gonna go so I'm just gonna take a scotch bright pad stuff it down in the hole and I'm gonna work it back and forth and try to pull it from the underside and 
get it. There you go. That way we can try to get as much of the surface rust, little dirt, debris, scale out of there. Try to get this thing ready. So I just give these a really good thorough wipe down with a wax and grease remover and masking them all up and just making a few simple little uh, plugs out of some painter's tape. Keep paint out of where I don't want it. Namely the threaded holes I just tapped as well as the uh, holes for the ball, under ball joint. So plug those up, let's clean up later and tape off the spindle. The bearing rides on this surface, so this one here is okay if it has paint. You're from the factory, your heat shield gets paint, um, bolted to this face, so that's okay to paint as well. So we're all ready. So we're gonna go hit it with some etching primer, and um, yeah, we'll see how it looks. So after one coat of the etching primer, I followed up with this custom shop custom coat. It's a DTM direct to metal gray primer. I really like this product. I used it a lot when I was working on other projects with the car. It sprays incredible and it dries really quick. And uh, it's just, I've never had an issue with it. And it says you can even paint over it in 30 minutes, but we're gonna give it a couple hours. I want it to fully cure and dry. I don't want any problems. So that's what I did for the second coat. And after that, we'll do the final coat of color. The primer is dried up real nice after two coats. And this is the first coat of color and i'm actually using eastwood spray gray so it's just a cast iron um, replication and it, i've used it before works great first coat is always really light as always and then we'll follow that up with one or two more coats as needed so it's looking real good though i like the color that's going to look really nice so we're going to go do the other one and uh see how it looks So check these out. This is the finished product. This is what we've been working so hard on. Man, these things turned out great. I'm really happy with the finish and results I got. And I remember how bad these things looked when I got them. They were all rusty and scaly and grimy. They needed a lot of work. But they're all cleaned up. The rust is gone. We have a new cast gray finish on these. The holes are trapped out and they're ready to go on the car. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And if you turn on the bell notification, you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.